The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. In 2012, as you know, we've had a lot of issues associated with corn, not only in Ontario, but throughout North America. One of those issues has been ear molds and mycotoxin production. So the field crop team of OMAFRA went about and, and surveyed the province looking for both ear molds and mycotoxin production. And this is what we found. If we look at the 2012 survey map of Ontario, you'll notice first thing that 85%, those A green dots that are associated across the province, show that corn of less than 0.5 per, parts per million. Excellent quality of corn. The purple bees, 14% of them were in that 0.5 6 to 1.9 and again both the A's and the B's are distributed across the province. We only had 4% of the corn samples that we would classify as two parts per million or greater. Those are those C's. What the map generally summarizes is that across the whole province we have very good quality corn. That doesn't mean though that we may not have some hot spots where you may have some individual concerns or issues there. So always every field needs to be um, sampled, every field needs to be evaluated independently. Because of the concern of aflatoxin in the U.S., Another component of our survey looked at aflatoxin production in the 2012 corn crop. What we found is very little, if no samples came back as positive for aflatoxin. As always, gibberella ear mold is our main concern in the province, but again, growers need to be evaluating every field. And here are a couple things you should be looking for. Whenever you're out scouting for ear molds in corn, one of the Telltale signs is often look at the ear. Often ears that are upright are doing not too bad. If there's an open husk, the humidity is important. And if you pull back, you often will see very little, if any, ear molds. Uh, one of the concerns often are these ears that you find that where the husk is still nice and tight. And if you pull back on that, you often see telltale signs of, in this particular case, you're seeing gibberella ear mold where the mold is starting from the tip, working its way down. This one, you see the white fungal growth associated with it. As it develops, you'll see that beautiful pink color as well. That pink color is often an indication that there is the dawn or mycotoxin being produced. If we look at this ear here and we pull back, what you see is again that white fungal growth at the tip. But in this particular case, you see that pink color associated with that mold. This is usually an indication that there could be some mycotoxin concern there. So if you're a livestock producer or keeping that grain, um, utilizing that grain on farm, you want to check and have that corn tested. <laughs>